Praise God, that is the benefit sweetly coming here to, to grandma, to, to the West Coast. God's protection enable us to come. Maaga pa sana kami, but uh, medyo masama nga yung panahon. But praise God, dahil uh, andito kami, and we're, we're able to fellowship together. Uh, hopefully, hindi nyo pa nakalimutan yung ating message as we continue on our study sa First John. We're now sa First John chapter 4. Hopefully, take notes kayo. Remember, na as we study this, this is not simply narinig natin, but we are able to apply it sa ating buhay. So, medyo, we'll be studying First John, starting verse 1, up to verse 11. So, 11 verses today. But if, before we begin, We will just read our scripture reading. So can I request everyone to please stand up as we read together. This is Paul's letter given to those in Philippi as he is encouraging them with these words. And in this encouragement, you will see who really Christ is. So let's read together. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, considered robbery to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, being in the form of an servant, and coming in the likeness of man, and being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that by the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, that every time shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord with the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time that we can study your word, learn from it. And the same manner, Lord God, we be aware of who you are and who we are as children of God. I pray, Lord God, that you continue working our lives. May we not be hearers only, Lord God, but doers. And as we hear your word, be in college, really, as your children, and the by our state it with you, Lord God. So just want to thank you, praise Lord God, for this time. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So everyone will be seated. So before I proceed, I'll be reading this statement written by a well-known author. And this is what he said. Daddy. I am trying here to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus Christ. They would say, I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one, big, one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level or with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come up with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that option to us, and he has no intentions to do so taken from mere Christianity by Z.S. Lewis. So what this is saying, and similar to our, the verse that we read, 
When the Lord Jesus Christ came into this earth, He didn't come in and He was not created to be made human. He is God, He is divine, taking the human form. He is fully God and the same manner because of His incarnate man, man, humanity, He is fully man. And if we don't believe that, we might as well say, the many things that the Lord Jesus has taught us, the very Bible that we're reading, makes no sense because the one we believe is someone who is either a lunatic. What, the, what is a lunatic? Parang insane siya. Eh? Or either, as others would say, when the Lord Jesus Christ was questioning the Pharisees and those Jews who were about to stone him, are you about to kill me because of the miracles that I did? They answered, no. You know what did they say? Sabi sa Book of John. Because you, a mere man, claim to be God. And yet that is really his claim. He is the Son of God. And through him alone can we be saved. It's either you believe him on his declaration of who he is. That's why when when I say let us study the first book of John, he was writing it to the believers with the understanding that we have read the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, its primary reason why the why it is written, he gave it out. John chapter 20, verses 31 and 32. There are many things that the Lord has done. But these things are written that you may believe in Jesus as the Christ. And by believing in Him, you will be saved. So, with that being said, we'll be studying now the fourth chapter of the, the first or First John chapter 4, if I say. Let this be in our mindset. Jesus Christ claimed to be God in the flesh, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, and that is who He is. So, my, oh, well, I entitled. The title of the message na is Lest We Be Unaware. Why, Kuya, why are, are, we, are we really aware of the, of the Lord that we are worshiping? Do we really understand the depth of His claim? When He claimed He is the Christ, what do we understand? Often, baka yung, often mga Pilipinos, they would equate, Oh, He is Jesus Christ. His first name is Jesus, his last name is Christ. Ganun ba? Yung, the, the attachment of the word Christ is the anointed one, the cho chosen one, the Messiah. If, if you study the Bible, that same Christ, John, um, Genesis 3 pa lang, my indications na of who is the one coming when the when the first see Adam and Eve sin and the Lord was telling him telling the writer of the book of Genesis when he was writing it down and, and the seed of the woman would bruise, bruise uh, and the seed of the serpent would bruise the heel and the uh, seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. That seed is already Jesus Christ being proclaimed. When, when God saw the nakedness of man and decided because if you study the Genesis account, man after realizing they were naked they decided to what? Sow leaves to cover themselves. First time that I'm not shame, realizing they were naked. You know what God did? He took the skin and covered them. 
when he took that skin, what does it mean? There was a sacrifice that is necessary. Kasi you, you won't have the skin and expect the animal to be alive. <laughs> so, what are those? Those are types of practices indicating that there is someone coming. So, when Isaiah was, yung palatin natin binabasa when Christ is, when we are trying to celebrate Christmas, yung about the Emmanuel coming God with us, eh, ito yung, so, how many years before Isaiah, Isaiah writing about him? So when the, he claimed to be Christ, the Messiah, he is the anointed one being pointed to the whole story of the Old Testament. Marami tayong types. Let me just say types. You might know they're studying the book of Ruth at the moment. Ruth is a non-Jew. She is a Moabite. And yet, mayroon doon yung napangasawa niya, his name is Boaz. Ang term sa kanya is the kinsman redeemer. Anong type no? Christ is our kinsman redeemer. Because sa pinasa natin, <coughs> and coming in the likeness of man, he is like us, man. Tao siya. He need to take the form of a man. Why? Because if not, and no one can see God and expect to live. All of those in the Old Testament, even I, when Isaiah, when he saw, so Isaiah chapter 6, he, he knows that he is a wicked man and he is supposed to die. Gideon understand that and everyone who will see an angel of the Lord with a big A and big L understand that it's the presence of God and absolute dawn, the expectation is they to die. So, let's be aware. Let us be aware that in the worship that then is really the true God who came in the form of a man. He, he is not a creation of God. He is God Himself. Nothing in this world that is created without Him. All creation is by Him and through Him, the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, you know, what did He do? He humbled Himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Aware but I of what kind of death is the death on the cross? Akala lang natin, simply lang, sinusuot lang natin dito, death on the cross. But, yan ang, maraming nagsasabi, uh, anong significance na? Do you know why it took so long before the, before the fullness of time has come for him, for the Lord to come and die on the cross? Kasi he would not die if the world was under the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, or even during the time of Alexander the Great, where the Greeks were the best and the most powerful nation during that time, it needed to be the Romans. Why? Because they invented crucifixion. Sabi nga the Bible, Cursed is he who hung on a tree. And he was cursed not because God is worth, or Christ is worth cursing, but His curse is because of our sins. He has to bury it, carry it on the cross. So when, when Paul was the Lord talking to the Colossians, when he says, yung, yung sins niya has been nailed to the cross, and do you view of understanding? Because Christ was cursed on the cross, he has taken our sins with him. And when he died, he is the perfect atonement for our sins. So the sin that we cannot atone for, hindi na siya, natin siya kayong bayaran. Pero kahit binayaran siya ng Panginoon Jesus para sa atin. 
So when you were saying yung mga kanta kanina, hindi ko pa sila kinausap yung music team. But it's very much with the same team na pinag-aaralan natin ngayon. So, hopefully, when you realize all those, we will be led to this one. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of heaven, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and even those under the earth. So, ang unang una natin, what should we be aware of? Let us be aware of who Jesus Christ is. Partly, sinabi ko na, because I, I need to introduce him so that we will all be aware. Huwag natin i-take lightly what Christ has done for us. My last message, last point of message ko when I delivered the message, two Sundays ago in JRCMS, JRCMS, the last point ko, He paid the cost, which is so high, it took his, his life. Yung, the high cost of our salvation, hindi siya madali kasi buhay nung lumi ka sa ating kalak kalakit nun. He has to suffer and die for us. So, be aware who, 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 who Christ is. I think verse little would be 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. And this is what is written. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. By this you know the, by this you know the spirit of God, as every spirit that confesses, confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit does not confess that Jesus Christ has came in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming, is now already in this world. So, what is Apostle John trying to teach? You mga from Asia Minor during that time. He is reminding them that there are there is the Spirit of God and there are a lot of false spirits. So he was simply telling us you should be aware that the Christian worship is the true Spirit, the Spirit of God. He is the only one who came in the flesh for us. If you say, oh, uh, no, kasi ngayon, the world has advanced. You, you previous claim of, no, Jesus Christ, he, he, he didn't even exist. You can hear a lot of people, now atheists would recognize, yeah, he didn't exist. He was, he was, from, was from, he, gave, he was, Mary gave birth to him, he's got genealogy, that's a proven yun eh. And he, they have this tomb where they say he was buried there. Alam na lahat yun eh. Kasi na, na ibabalik na all the way from even, even yung panahon pala ni Nebuchadnezzar, ni, ni which is uh, around 700 years before Christ, na, na will retrace na record niya. So, hindi na, di mo naman sabi, no, it didn't exist. Yes, we believe it exists. He's even a good teacher. Sabi niya, but you lang, he's just a man, he didn't do anything. When we say that, you are simply saying that the person, the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you is not powerful enough to save you because he is just like me and you. But because we know that the gospel teaches us he died on the cross, buried, and he was raised on the third day. We who believe in him has victory because of what he has done. He is not simply a man, he is God, incarnate in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yana, he is Christ. He is the Messiah, the anointed one. Let us be aware of who he is. Because if we are not, we can be easily swayed. Why? What is the warning? And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? 
Ngayon nga, hindi na masyadong issue yung there's this group of atheists kasi even the atheists would require fight to believe atheism. Oh, kailangan lang. They have to convince themselves and be persuaded and persuaded that this, this thing that we believe is true. So now, they would admit, oh, there is that person, Jesus Christ, but we don't believe him as God. And if you don't believe him, then everything makes no sense. Because only by believing in him can you be saved. A lot of people were asking the Lord Jesus Christ, even the, those who know the law, mga Pharisees, what are the works that we must do to be saved? And they, they want to work for it. But what did the Lord Jesus Christ say? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that you, so that you may be saved. Yun ang sagot lang ng Panginoon. So you have to believe in Him for who He is. He is the Son of God. He is God who has come in the form of a flesh. And His name is Jesus. Sabi nga niya sa 1 John chapter 2 verses 22 to 23 Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So hopefully that would make sense to us. Understanding, be aware, kasi nga, lest we be unaware. Pumunta ka, I'll be attending the Bible studies of West Coast, and we'll have fellowship. And yet, you, for all you know, you, you have the same mindset as those in the world who think that Jesus Christ is just part of history. But yeah, you know, 2,000 years ago, there was this, because it it's now historically proven, archaeology points that there was one time a Christ who, who died. Probably records now would show that even his burial place that was owned by one of the rich guys during their time, Joseph of Arimathea, can, can be traced back and they would know that yes, he did exist and he, he did came in the flesh. But we, we cannot stop there. It's either we believe him as God, as who he is, or say totally, I don't like to believe him. Which would be very sad, even if you think you know him. Because true knowledge of him is understanding and believing in him. And that is eternal life, knowing the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Then, another, another reality, one is be aware of who Jesus Christ is, another reality is be aware of who you are in Jesus Christ. Hindi, hindi na si Pang, hindi na si, ang Panginoong Isus ang pinag-uusapan natin, kayo mismo. Sino ba tayo kay Kristo? And this is what the Apostle John was telling his readers, sabi niya, you are of God. Because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are of God. Ang, 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 ang gospels or and, and yung letters, pag pinag-aralan nyo siya, hindi siya lumalayo sa katuruan. Always running the same line. Bakit? Bakit ko sinabi? Pag binalikan nyo yun, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called sons of God. Ito naman, sabi na naman niya, you are of God because you are sons of God because you believe Him. Tapos sinabi mo niya, mapabasa mo yung when he, he wrote this, little children. Kasi why, why is He saying little children? Kasi Si John by this time, he is the elderly elder ng church. Siya lang naman yung nabuhay ng longest. Si Apostle Paul, 
mga 64 AD. Sinugi na ni Nero. Eh. Tapos si Peter, ganun din. Si, si Apostle John lang. John the Elder. Marami siyang pangalan. Siya lang yung sumuti. O sabi ng iba, John the Beloved. So, so, siya yung, yung, kanyang, yung kanyang term sa sarili niya, the one whom Jesus loved. Yan, siya yun. Siya lang siya yun. Siya lang siya yun. So, little children. Yun ba? Just imagine Graham cuddling Aiba and si Alejandro. Parang gano'n lang. Gan, may, may, may endearment na. You are of God, little children. Parang sinasabi niya, Uy, kayo, mga anak kayo ng Diyos. Mga anak. So, double ano siya. And have overcome them. Sino ba na overcome na? Those who are anti-Christ. Those who don't believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Because He, if, if you want to memorize one verse, in times when you're doubting, in times you feel like the world is up against you, in times I said, this life is so stressful, I want to give up. Remember this. Sabi niya, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world. Who is in this world? The devil. But he that is in you is greater. So you can... Alam niyo ba ganun kayo? Or every time trouble would come, you say you're a believer and yet you still curse life. Pambihira ang buhay to. Talagang pambihira po ang buhay. And no one can deny that. But remember, be aware who you are. You are God's children and He is in you. You don't walk alone. Ha? Maraming, maraming gusto yun. They walk, they don't want to walk alone. They always want, want yung company. He is more than a company. Yung ating Panginoon na nasa buhay niyo. Hopefully, we, we learn that. Then, he, if, if we continue, they are of the world, they poor, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Halina. You did not know. Why do a lot of people tend to see, look at believers now, Christians now, tayo na ngayon ang considered the wrong ones in society. Everyone should be politically correct. And the moment we say something wrong, as if the, the law has been made so that there's a way to parse the believer. Yesterday, we had this meeting. I didn't realize, first time, I didn't realize that every time we sing songs, Ah, uh, kasi in the church space, some amount to those who provide you mga songs so that we can legally post them up. There is a law pala, hindi ko alam. In, uh, intellectual property, even, na para mawala yung legal repercussions, dapat nagbabayad ka ng copyright. What? Eh, yun, yun sinulat nila doon, kinopya din lang naman sa bahay mo doon. At sabi nga ng anak ko, oh, it's not you, look, it's a Bible nyo. Most likely your Bible would have copyrights. Sabi ko, then, kami mga elders were talking, and they say, oh, Brad, yun palang verse na pinupost mo ganyan. Yeah. Pag ang Bible mo ay eh, hindi King James Version, may copyright pala. 
Sabi ko nga sa kanila, sabi tayo sa pagkumanta tayo na post dyan, dahil malaki tayo, grupo, we can be charged for not paying that certain amount. Yearly subscription, should I say. So we can legally post. Sabi nga nung kasama namin, mali-mali nga yung spelling eh. Sabi naman niya, mali-mali spelling nun kasi download sa Google yun. But that's how it is. Even, even the word now, ito, kung somebody will say, Uh, that is coming from New King James Version. And the New King James says, this is copyrighted. I should have asked permission. But I don't know. Why? Because I'm using, and I have paid, this app na ginagamit ko, hopefully my app will pay for it. Not me. Uh, ano ba yan din ako, di ba? So, the word is, and this is not only against Christians, but mostly it is against us, Why, why, why copyright? But, but the new king, ang king James hindi siya copyrighted. Kasi the, the publishers believe they have that's a receipt text. Original copyright would have been directly from the apostles. And since they, they, they have allowed it to be delivered to us, no need for copyright. Ang copyrighted lang naman dito sa mga Bibles natin are those indentations, those cross-references, or basically, I believe, the publishers would not mind with the verses itself. So I think I'm good, lest I am unaware. Ah. So, yan, yan, even the world now would have, yung mga beliefs natin na gusto, gusto nila bigyan ng law. So Pilipinas, ano yung matagal na pinag-usapan? So given. Why? Kasi yun lang mga, Mostly Christian would say, that's not the way you know, we were created. We were created, created Adam and Eve. It was never Adam and Steve. Diba? Mag gano'n. And yet, gano'n yung mag eh. It's designed to be against us. And yet, even if they are all against us, as believers, we are aware that He who is in us is greater than He that is in this world. So let us all be aware of that as we walk. Sabi niya sa Romans chapter 8 verse 9 to 11. But you are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead is dead to sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So that promise, paganda mo sa akin yun, Romans chapter 8, full of promises. And that promise tells you that the Christ, the Spirit who is in you. Though your body could be decaying, but spiritually you're more than alive. Huh? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And we should always be aware of that. And then, oh no, we should be aware. Be aware of who Christ is. Be aware of who you are in Christ. Then, and again, ito magsumulat si John, eh. when he writes, get to who's going to be done. Who is, who is Christ, who we are in Christ. Now, ano dapat yung ginagawa kung parang kung nakay Kristo kayo? Then, he follow it up in this. Be aware that we ought to love because of Jesus Christ. Anong klaseng love ba ang nare-require sa atin? Often, para mababasa mo yung the writer, First Peter, when I delivered one of my messages, he was writing to them as brethren. Pagka yung brethren, brotherly love, sa Grego, it, called, it is called Pileo. Yung, kaya nga yung sa inyo is... Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. Pileo. 
So we we can as brothers we can exhibit that. But sometimes even brothers do quarrel. Diba? But the call for us is to love. Anong love? It's even loving the enemies. Diba? Kaya na, true Christianity is on the only belief that tells us and commands us. This is God not just simply telling us, pwede ba mahal mo yung kaaway mo? Hindi. Love your enemies. Love one another. Love God. Those are all commandments. Sino nung ang Panginoon, di ba? Yung, yung what is the greatest commandment when then he, he recites Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 to 5, 5 to 6. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart. And, and the, the other one is much like it. Diba? You love the brother and then love the enemy. So why why love? Why love? How, how, can, how can we do that? Sabi na yung John, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So, ganun yung sumulat, ano? Para tayong trin up. Pinakilala niya si Kristo, sinabi niya, dahil kinikilala niya si Kristo, you are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are now God. Dahil, Him who is in you. Oh, sinasabi niya, God that is in you, is now telling us, we should love one another. So, is it because simply we are being told to love one another? So we'll be obeying it? Oh, that's good, we obey. But it's more than obedience, it's the understanding that even the power to love, kung tayo lang, hindi naman talaga natin gagawin. Hindi mo siya gagawin at hindi mo siya kaya gawin. Kasi what, what love do we know? Brotherly love nga is sa akin mahirap pa. Kaya kayo mag, lalo na kung imamanahin. <laughs> Mahirap ang buti lang si Joshua. So, <laughs> huh? so, 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 those are realities. Anong lasing love ito? Yung agape love. The same love, when we read yung sabi nga, sabi nga ni, ni Paul sa mga taga-Romans, God demonstrated His love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the God who is a God who is holy, 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 a God who is just, and yet, He is also a loving God. He is willing to die for the sinful man who deserves the wrath of God. Why? Because he then and he alone is able to love even the unlovable. Yun yung magape. And that is the same love that is supposedly because ano? Trinit na lang tayo ni John dito. O sinabi mo, naniwala ka sa Panginoon Jesus. O nasa, nasa Panginoon Diyos, Jesus ka na. Ang Diyos ay nasa iyo. Ang Espiritu niya, ang Holy Spirit ay nasa iyo then you should love one another. It's not a trick. It's a reality na dapat kaya natin gawin the way He loves. Ang hirap po niya, mga kapatid. Why? Ako lang, nung baka rinig ako na hindi ko nagustuhan, nagpapanting ang tenga ko, nagmumulay, para magiging kamatis ang tenga ko sa galit eh. Human reaction yun eh. And yet we are told to love. Are we capable of doing it? No. But because God who is in us, who is greater than He that is in this world, we are able. Kaya nga, magkakadikit yung promise nyo. Kaya memorize nyo yun. We have overcome. We are overcomers. We can overcome even those who are unlovable. 
Kasalanan na kagad. You know, there are things that sa pinasang labo ko, Lord, to be told by God to love. So, even the word unlovable should not be part of our vocabulary. Kasi nga, yung calling sa atin is to love. So, ito, sinabi niya sa mga apostles, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have loved for one another. More than the brother love, it's a love that understands even the faults, even the hurts of those who is part of the family of God. Yeah, difficult job. Sabi mo, para ito is tayo Christian. How how much more can we really show love to those outside? How can we share to them the gospel if we don't, don't demonstrate the love is that is from God? So when when John was writing this, he was simply telling us, oh, ang Panginoong Jesus, He is God, and because He is God and He is in your life, maganda yung kanyang pagkakasunod sa Lord. So hopefully we learn. How do we apply this sa buhay natin? Pinagpatuloy niya. And this, in this, the love of God has manifested toward us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we may live through Him. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, let Beloved, if God so love us, we, we also ought to love one another. There is no other, those, there is no greater love than one laying his, his life for a friend, sabi nga. But we are not his friends. Why? Because we are sinners. We are dead to sin. We are separated from God. And yet, it still took God to love us so that we can be reconciled with Him. You propitiation, sabi mo, it's a difficult word. Why? Because as much as we want to appease God, tayo lang, tayo lang, we'll try to appease Him. How do you appease God? How I will obey? Sabi nga, if you want to obey God, Obey everything and don't break any law. The moment you break any law, you have sinned against God. Who can live a life of perfection? But what about your perfection? That means a presbyter. Be holy, for I am holy. What does holiness mean? Wala kang kasalanan. Be ye perfect, for I am perfect. Perfection. And yet, that perfection, that holiness, was made available to us. How? When God manifested His love towards us, He sent His only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, going for full seal, can only go see John. Then He went back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you really believe He was who He claims to be? The Son of God. The Messiah the anointed one. If you do, then he's telling you, beloved, if God so loves us, we also ought to love one another. Why? Because he has a peace himself. And he is now in our lives. We should be able to walk the way he walked. We are also able to love in the same manner that He loves us. Even sinners as we are, He loves us so much. And He paid it with the high cost. He took His life. So are we to bow down and worship Him? Or are we to say, Sorry, Christ, fear in Jesus. I have other things to do. Hopefully we fully understand 
that if we really put our trust in Him and we believe Him, that's the only time we become a child of God. For a part of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you try to do it in your works, nothing will happen. Sabi nga niya sa ano, sa kanya mga disciples, uh, how do you bring much good? He who abides in me, he will bring much good. For a part from me, did he say, you can do something? No. He says, you can do nothing. So hopefully we can learn and live through, it, through God's word sa buhay natin. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word. I pray, Lord God, that as we live our lives here of this sinful world where it seems like it's getting difficult each day, I pray, Lord God, that we as overcomers, we as your children, we who are bought with a price, a costly price, and cost the life of our, of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, na makapamuhay kami with confidence because we are aware of who we are in you. And we just want to praise you and thank you, Lord God, because the power to live a life that is holy is not because we are holy, but because you are, you are holy. And because you are holy and you are in our lives, we pray that we can walk holy the way you walk. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.